What's up everyone? Welcome back to another exciting Codex review. Happy Saturday. Today is the day that we are allowed to reveal some secrets from that the, we have uh, been uh, that we've been hiding for just a little bit. That's right. We're in the inner circle and it's time yeah. for you to be inducted. Absolutely. Everyone You Aaron. <laughs> you. Everyone has been inducted to the inner circle. Games Workshop has seen fit to grant us a sneak peek of the new Dark Angels Codex. Hey. It and is beautiful. It is a gorgeous codex. Yeah, a little like gold on the uh, like a little shiny reflective a gold on it. Key on the front. It's pretty cool. I'm I'm pretty happy with the the aesthetics of the new box set and also the new models. Uh, everything gorgeous. Well done as always on those new models. GW those new Deathwing Knights are sick. Deathwing but... Knights <clears throat> are the Inner Circle companions in there. Uh, no, they're not. They're just not a bunch of Terminators. Sad. Those models are. Oh, so cool. Indeed. So in this video, we're going to be talking all about the new Dark. Angels Codex. We're going to be talking about the three detachments held inside, as well as the new and the changed data sheets that Dark Angels have received. So, if you're a fan of the First Legion, this is the video for you. Of course, if you like all of Warhammer 40k, make sure you pay attention to the rest of our channel as well. Uh, hit that like button, share with your friends, subscribe. We go live, you know, what, five days a week? with uh, new exciting Warhammer 40,000 content, all free here on our YouTube channel. As well, we have a lot more Warhammer content on our website. You go to thewarroom.vhx.tv, you can even get a free trial if you want to uh, if you want to see some more stuff there. And as a matter of fact, if you're watching this video and you want to see these Dark Angels being played in a game, we're going to be playing them in a game on our YouTube channel later this week, but if you want to catch them right now, Right, right now, right now, like go check like, out that go check out that free trial. We've got a battle report already up in the war room, and that's going to have the new Dark Angels with one of their brand new detachments. So if you want to see that, get a catch a glimpse of how the Dark Angels are faring. Now's the time. You can go see that right now with a free trial. The war room All right, you ready, Jack? You ready to dive in? Born ready. Let's uh, excellent. Let me let me pull up the. What are we gonna do? Data sheets, or are we gonna do, do actually do the army sheets? rules? There's a, there's a small amount of stuff in the army rules, mainly keyword focused. Oh yes, who gets Ravenwing and who gets Deathwing? So if you, you get the Ravenwing keyword, mm -hmm. if um, if you're a mounted unit or your vehicle unit that can fly, thankfully they didn't just put this in every single data sheet. Yeah. Like they did last time. Oh, by the way, if you're Dark Angels, you get Ravenwing. Yep, this is a nice, much more simple. Yep. And you get Deathwing if you are a Terminator, a Blade Guard Ancient, Veteran, Blade Guard Vets, Stern Guard Vets, Vanguard Vets with jump packs, Land Raider of any kind, Repulsor of any kind, or Dreadnought. Yeah. What with jump packs? Oh, the Vanguard Veterans with jump packs? Yes. I they were just Vanguard Veterans now. They might I need think it. Vanguard Veterans on foot went away. Yeah, exactly. Codex. Like, I think that the data sheet is now Vanguard Veterans and they just happen to have jump packs. I'm not even oh, sure. Oh, so technically this doesn't... Uh, they, might, they might just be Vanguards with jump packs. Either way, we know what they mean. It's yeah. Vanguard Veterans. Yes. So everything that's a veteran, including the traditional transports and dreadnoughts of the Deathwing, get Deathwing. Everything that is traditionally Ravenwing gets Ravenwing. It makes sense. Yep. And that'll, of course, those keywords will end up mattering in some of these detachments. Yes. So first up, we've got uh, Unforgiven Task Force, which some of you might know from the index. Mm -hmm. So the Dark Angels index came with the Unforgiven Task Force, and I didn't really look at the Unforgiven Task Force back in the indexes. Mm -hmm. So you pointed out one very large change, but yeah. I don't know if there's anything else. No, most of it is um, is unchanged. There's one stratagem that has changed in ways that we'll talk about. Uh, I think we'll probably still run through it, but maybe give a little bit less analysis on some of these choices than we are going to in the future detachments. But, you know, someone may be watching this several months after the Codex comes out and they just want to hear about it. For sure. So, the detachment rule is Grim Resolve, which means that when you're battle shocked, you change your OC to 1 instead of 0. Yeah. This situationally very cool, situationally doesn't do anything. Most of the time, I'd say doesn't do anything. Often. Often. Yeah. Doesn't do anything. Very funny to Tyranids. It's very funny into Tyranids. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, the Unforgiven generally is pretty funny into Tyranids. Mm -hmm. um, but how often are you battle shocked on an objective and that's the only unit on the objective? And it doesn't have an ancient. And it doesn't have an ancient or some other way to get plus one. And you're not and you and you definitely don't have the CP to auto pass it. And mm -hmm. the answer is sometimes, for sure, but not like often enough for it to be a detachment rule. Yeah, it's cute, but it doesn't come up terribly often, not as often as something like Doctrines, but it's also not really the strength of the detachment. Yeah. 
Enhancements, we got Shroud of Heroes. Mm -hmm. First time the bear is destroyed on a two up, they uh, you set them back up as close as possible where they were destroyed with three wounds remaining. Yep, it's and if they were battle shocked when they died, they stand up with full health. Oh, that's pretty funny. Yeah, it's very specifically useful, but cool. Yep. Um, yeah, I, that's I, pretty don't, good. I don't mind it. It's, it's still good. pretty good, good enhancement. I believe it's the exact same so far. Yep. Stubborn Tenacity, while the bear is leading a unit, uh, plus one to the hit roll if they're below starting strength, plus one to the wound roll if the unit is battle shocked and below its starting strength. And? Yes. Oh. So it's if you're below your starting strength, you get plus one to hit. If you're mm -hmm. below your starting strength and your battle shock, you get plus one wound. Hmm. So it's not below starting and below half. It's below starting and battle shock. I feel like I should be or, but okay. Yeah, I think they just wanted to escalate it, right? Yeah. So you get one buff and then you get both buffs. If you are really, if you are truly <clears throat> messed up and also battle shocked. Yeah, basically, <clears throat> this army is crying out for a way to self battle shock. Just let and them kill just, your transports. Just let them just kill your transports. They can't do it. Yeah, kill your transport in your turn, so you have to make them overwatch. And then you charge, and then you get... Well, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. But then you shoot, and you get plus one to hit and wound. Easy. All right. Uh, next one. All right. Weapons of the First Legion. Um, plus one to the attack, strength, and damage of the bear's melee weapons. Yep. And if he's battle shocked, plus two to attack, strength, and damage instead. Perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. So here's the, here's the problem with... Um, battle shock as the mechanic. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of other armies have do this, and then if something else, do the do a better version of it, right? Yeah. And usually you can game the do a better version of it, right? Mm -hmm. Like world leaders, you have to charge to get the better version of your enhancement. Or yeah. sisters is when they're right. wounded. Yeah. Whether you can always res them up with you know a certain amount of wounds left. You can switch yourself to a doctrine. Exactly. You can make sure that you get both benefits. But with the second half keying off of battle shock, something you cannot control. Yeah. And in fact, if your opponent doesn't want to battle shock you, you just will go whole games without. Yeah. If your opponent doesn't have battle shock rules, or you're playing against Space Marines, they're like, yeah, you take battle shock tests when you're below half strength. I guess that's the only time. Yeah. Because they don't do anything else for battle shock. Then. Then. That's that. Then it just all your rules only help you sometimes when you're already below half strength. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Pennant of Remembrance, while the bear is leading a unit, models in the unit have six of Feel No Pain, and while they are battle shocked, they have a four of Feel No Pain. This was a fairly good enhancement that we often saw taken when this detachment was being played. Yep, six of Feel No Pain is good. I'd take it just for six of Feel No Pain on an appropriately thick unit. You, you basically are just taking it for six of Feel No Pain. Sometimes you find the funny matchup, and then a four of Feel No Pain on Terminators is disgusting. Yes. But six of Feel No Pain is still worth paying for. Yes. If you could self battle shock, if there was any ability to just be like, take a battle shock test on one of your own units, this would be a lot better. But Easy. it just isn't. Uh, they have Armor of Contempt, which is the same, same as every always. other one. Unforgiven Fury, which is your shooting phase or the fight phase. Um, you pick a unit. Mm -hmm. And until end of the phase, weapons uh, equipped by that unit get lethal hits. And if one or more Deptus Astartes units from your army are currently battle shocked, until the end of the phase, each time a model in your unit makes an attack, hit roll of five plus scores a crit. One CP lethal hits is pretty dang good. This is honestly quite often lethal uh, fives. Yeah. Because any unit in your army has to be battle shocked for yep. this. And so by late game, it's not at all unlikely that yeah. this could happen. I, it's a little annoying that it has to be a, an Adeptus Astartes unit, so you can't have an agent getting battle shocked. Because you got some sweet leadership eight voidsmen around or something. Yeah. But uh, still. Still. It's a good, good strat with some where it's a good strat if the upside doesn't kick in. If the upside kicks in, it's awesome. It does have to, all the other ones have to be that unit. That unit. Yeah. That one, I like the change to where any unit can I be think that's shot. the only one that has that. That is sad. All right. Here, I'm going to hand this off to you for the rest of those strats. Cool. Intractable is a nice one command point, which <laughs> lets you shoot and charge in a turn in which you fell back. Super... That's Simple very strat, good. but it is very good. Lots that of is... armies have this, and lots of them like having this. Yep. And the ones that don't would love to. Absolutely. I would love to have this. I like that it's fallback, shoot, and a charge. You get to do both. Mm -hmm. It's not choose. Uh, I'm 100% down for the strat. It's great. Just good utility. Uh, fire Discipline. One CP, a uh, Death to start his unit, gains Assault, Heavy, and Ignore Cover on all their weapons. They're obviously not going to be using Assault and Heavy at the same time, so you basically get... Ignore cover and your choice of assault or heavy. Most of the time it's going to be assault, I assume. Almost all the time. But, but that's pretty good. One CP shoot, shoot after moving and ignore cover is a great, 
great roll. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Uh, this is another good stratum. There's several very good utility, general all-rounder stratums in this detachment that are solid. Yep. Still are. One CP Grim Retribution in your opponent's shooting phase after an immunity shot. One uh, type of starters unit from your army can shoot back. And, or sorry, if if you have a thing destroyed, you can shoot. If you have a, a model destroyed, you can shoot back at the enemy that shot you. So if your opponent shoots, kills at least one model. So even though this stratagem can work on anything, it by definition is only going to work on multi-model units. Yes. It's never going to work on a... On a, on a like a land raider is not yeah. going to... <clears throat> yeah, if a land raider has one model destroyed by enemy shooting, it's really not going to shoot back. <laughs> uh, but then the rest of the unit can shoot back at that enemy unit if it's an eligible target. Yeah, I know like hell blasters are pretty good at this because you get shot by the units, you, the models you destroy, and you get shot by the units you didn't, yep. by the models you didn't. Yeah, the yeah, grim retribution is a good out of phase, really annoying shooting attack. It's they have to shoot threat. back, right? At the thing that shot them. Okay, so it's not like as annoying as it could be, but it's yeah. just good. It's still very good when you get it like a scrappy shooting unit in center field. It's like ah, this is this is a pain. This is gonna shoot back. Yeah, I definitely don't want to just like lose stuff. It would be <clears> insane <throat> if they could just shoot at whatever they wanted. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because then your whole plan has to. But it doesn't matter. It's not. It <laughs> does not how it works. Uh, and then the last stratagem is a little different. It's unbreakable lines, and this used to be one CP in your opponent's charge phase after they charge, get minus one damage on one of your units, which is very. Which good. was a pretty good strat. That's a pretty good strat. It is now two command points, and instead of minus one damage, it is minus one to wound. It does not carry with it that uh, that common modifier of if strength is greater than toughness. It's just a flat minus one to wound. Which, in some situations, is better than minus one damage. Not in most of them. It's more often than not, things that are charging your tough units that you want to use this on are going to have enough damage that minus one damage is better. Enough strength, at and, least. Yeah, yeah. And, or at least enough that. And then two CP instead of one is a big break point. This is a battle tactic. I feel obligated to point that out. You can make it free. How many of these are battle tactics? Uh, several. The... Um, mm -hmm. The lethal hits one, armor of contempt, and the uh, advance and ignore cover and shoot. So there's four out of six of these are battle tactics. It's pretty good. It, good, good detachment for captains. Yeah. So <clears throat> generally, debuffs on your opponent, especially in melee, work. Minus one damage is the best. Ideally. Then minus one to wound. Yeah. Then minus one to hit. Yeah, generally, and uh, especially because the times when it actually matters whether you live or not, minus one damage tends to do make more of an impact than minus one to wound. Yeah, two CP is the killer for me. Two CP. If it was one CP, it it's would still, still be, be quite good. good. Two CP is like a. I don't know how often I'm gonna have that budget. I don't know why they made it two and not minus one damage. They made it minus one to wound instead. Yeah, both of those felt unnecessary. Yeah, because like nobody's getting through your terminators with minus one. Uh, damage. damage. It took a anyway. long time. So, like, I don't know. I mean, it's not terrible on Deathwing Knights yeah. because they already have minus one damage, and if you minus, make them minus, minus one, two wound, damage was kind of slick, though. It it was. I mean, realistically, you're just not using the strap very often because two yeah. CP in yep. your opponent's turn. I could you see it like if you have a Terminator Captain. Yeah, I would probably just make it free. Yeah, like I still would, but I would have also made minus one damage free. So. It is also, uh, it's in the, is it in the charge phase immediately after? Yes, it's immediately after the end of charge phase. So you can control who gets to double up just based off of when you charge, and then you can activate in whatever order you want. Yeah. So you charge the captain's unit first, but you don't actually have to even, like, swing there first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got options. Yeah, it's a little, little unwieldy of when you use it. Yeah. So detachment overall, um, still a Fine. fairly solid detachment. There's several good utility stratagems here. It's a little situation on the detachment rule. I think that the pennant is the best relic here. Yeah, but there, there's you can take a second one and not feel bad about it. Yeah, I mean, I think they're I think the enhancements the other... are generally solid. I think the strats are generally okay. Yeah. I think the best strat got nerfed really hard. Yep. Um, the minus one damage on for one CP becoming minus one to wound for two. Yep. We'll also unfortunately soon be talking about the the, the data sheets. That this is used on, because the um, the feel no pain on a Deathwing command squad that could heal models, and then had a feel no pain from Pendant of Remembrance, was a really cool trick for this attachment index land. And spoiler alert: the Deathwing command squad is no longer going to be appearing in your lists. Yes, I'm I'm not sure why they nerfed the detachment. If anything, it wasn't very. 
wasn't crazy. It wasn't great. It felt like it was very like a good <laughs> average detachment. Yeah, I mean, you saw people having success with it. Mm -hmm. You saw Spatho doing well with it. It it was a solid detachment. Yeah, it didn't it wasn't taken over. It wasn't taken over. It was okay. Um, it generally did like good marine stuff, but it yep. didn't have a ton of power to it. Dude, well, shall we go to the next one? Yeah. Let's talk so about the next one. Next up is the Inner Circle Task Force. This one is very much themed after the Deathwing, as and you'd expect. That is super cool. I love Deathwing. I do like um, Conceptually. Conceptually. Uh, so, the detachment role is Vowed Target. This one is actually pretty cool, I think. It's uh, pick an objective at the start of your command phase. So, every command phase you can change the objective you pick. So, you pick oath and an objective every turn. Yep. And this objective doesn't have to be anywhere. Just, just an, objective. an objective. An objective. objective. Could be your objective if you want. Each time a Deathwing infantry unit from your army makes an attack against an enemy within range of that objective, which I'll probably just shorthand to against that objective, you get plus one to wound. So it's Deathwing infantry that's very specific, but shooting and combat plus one to wound against that objective marker. I like that it changes every turn. Yes, for sure. That helps a lot. I, I also like how, you know, we have a bunch of buffs to pick at the start of the command phase. You pick your oath target, you pick your, your vowed target, and if they're on the same objective, you really will mess them up. Yeah. Um, or you can pick, like, an oath target over here and an objective target right here and, mm -hmm. like, spread it out. And the fact that you can hit multiple units with it. Um, yep, because it's every unit on that objective. So if your opponent... Which, it's a funny thing that because you haven't picked the objective in your opponent's turn, it's one of those things where they're not trying to put too many units on any objective marker. Yeah, because if they put too many, you just pick that one. But then it might get a little easy to start. If they like put one thing on three objectives, it might be significantly easier to just pick one objective and still shoot them off the other two. Yeah. Because there's only one thing on it. Something to remember is it's not an enemy unit that started the turn on the objective. So they can, if they're a multi-model unit, they can pull off the objective and you will yeah. lose the plus one. Yeah, between activations, you, yeah. you would lose that. Not in the same activation. Mm -hmm because that's uh, how the rules work, but yep. between activations for sure you have to be careful so, that. So, cool rule, Deathwing Infantry is very limiting. It is very limiting, but I'm, I'm kind of happy they didn't just let Repulsor Executioners get... Um, that's fair. Plus one to win against it. I get it. <laughs> you know, Land Raiders. Um, so, we've got four enhancements here. First up is Champion of the Deathwing, and uh, this gives the bearer lethal hits whenever uh, they're in melee. So melee weapons equipped by the bear have lethal hits, and each time they make a melee attack against the vowed objective marker, critical hits of our fives. Is it just for that model? For that model, and not the unit. That... So, so unfortunately, you get better lethal hits against the target you're plus one to wound against. Mm -hmm. It's a nombo. I mean, if you have sustained, I suppose, like if you have a weapon that has sustained already, yeah. then you get know, sustained lethal fives on the character. I don't know where I'm finding that, but... I don't... I can't think of any death we'll, we'll, wing. We'll, we'll look I can't through. think of any death wing infantry that I've seen. Maybe we'll find one. It, it has to. We, but does this this goes on death wing model? Death wing model only. Okay, let's let's come back to this if there's a character that has sustained. Sounds good. Because if they don't, then this is kind of a non. It's not like a non bow. It just doesn't like doesn't synergize. Doesn't synergize. But it's still like lethal fives is still not bad. Lethal fives on one model. Lethal tends to get work done by quantity of attacks, and yeah. just having on one model is kind of weak. But if there is a character that has sustained one, maybe even two, which I don't know if there is, I'm just saying words. Yeah, well, that would be cool. It would be cool. Then, then I think actually that enhancement would be very good. Yep. Uh, Eye of the Unseen, Deathwing model only. Each time you target the bears, you know the stratagem, roll a d6, adding one if they are on the vowed objective, and then a five up, you gain a CP. So the bear gets five up CP regen for their unit. If the model is on the objective, it's a four plus. No. No? No. No? You, you, would take, you would just take Azrael? I mean, if it's like 5 or 10 points, then sure. Azrael? I mean, Azrael's really good. Yeah. I'm not going to say he's not. Um, yeah, I probably would just take Azrael. But, like, between Eye of the Unseen and ditching a card, you're probably going to get, like, four, three or four CP over the course of the game. And at that point, do I need Azrael? Yeah, but also, if, I, if I have the end scenes like 10 points or something, I'm not, I'm probably going to try and include it. Yeah, if it's cheap. Um, singular will. Each time the various unit piles in or consolidates, models of the unit can move an additional three inches. This I love. That one is really I good. love this on Terminators. <laughs> that, that I is, love that. 
Six inch consolidates and pylons is so good. That's what I like. Yes, it's very good, especially because mm. uh, consolidating is binary now. You either do or you do not. So if six inches Get gets you in range, which it often will, because six inch consolidates after a six inch pylon is pretty wild uh, amounts of movement. Yeah. You then get to consolidate, whereas you wouldn't have before. Just, I'm going to look up the the cost in the back, and I acknowledge that the um, the the points at the back of the book are not necessarily accurate. But just to kind of for an idea of what they were thinking, yeah, the inner circle task force singular will is 20 points, so that's the extra piling. I have the unseen. The sea region is 10. Okay, I would if, actually take that. If I have a character, I'm just taking that. Yeah. If I have a character. If you have a centerpiece unit, for sure. You just take that and like it'll provide you a CP over the course of the game. You supplement your discarded cards. Yeah, it's fine with me. There you go. And the last one is Deathwing Assault, which is 30 points in the back of the book. And this one gives... Uh, so it's for Deathwing model with Deep Strike only. And you can use the Deep Strike rule and the reinforcements up to your first, second, or third movement phase regardless of mission rules. So you can so it's first to the fray, but without the restriction that you have to go into reserves. But it also doesn't let you reserve more than a thousand points of your army. Yep. It also um, it does not. It specifically does not work on rapid ingress because it's only in your first movement phase. Yes. Still, turn one potentially deep striking a terminator unit is not bad. It is big. So I played with this. I played with it a bunch mm -hmm. in uh, Grey Knights. I played with first to the fray, which is thirty five. Sure. Um, and it is very nice being able to just take board position, turn one. Yep. Uh, especially if you are a very tanky army like, like Terminators, you can move up your front lines, drop on a side objective, you know, advance onto another objective, and you mm -hmm. get the party started immediately. You can get started, party started pretty fast. Pretty fast. <laughs> if you go first, it's just like, all right, I have all the objectives. I don't care that I move slow. It's just like, yeah. you just drop down. And that is actually a big deal. Now, you can't do the same thing you do in Grey Knights where, like, I reserved 1,400 points in my army because, yeah. you know, or 13 or some, some <laughs> stupid amount. Yeah. Um, but it also doesn't force you to go into yeah. reserves, which sometimes you don't. The enhancements in this, several of them are pretty good. Yeah, I like Singular Will. Mm -hmm. I like Eye of the Unseen for as cheap as it is. If there's a character with sustained champion of Deathwing, I think is actually pretty good. And if there isn't, then it's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. And then Deathwing Assault, um, I, I quite like. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really, the pile and consultant is one that sings to me the most. Yeah. That's yeah. The one that, really one, like. that one is quite good. I mean, um, you have those on separate units, right? You have one unit absolutely. that drops on an objective. You have a yeah. second unit that rapid ingresses I mean, in the following turn. Because all your rules so far rule. are Deathwing Infantry, you can really assume what you're going to be taking this attachment. It's really telling you what to do. So now we've got the uh, stratagems. Mm -hmm. Arm of Contempt is exactly the same as what you'd expect. Next, uh, Martial Mastery. One Deathwing Infantry in the fight phase gets real ones to wound. If you're attacking your vowed objective, you get reroll all wounds. All right. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. If Plus you, one to wound and reroll wounds is... That's, that's gotta hurt. If, if Deathwing charge you on that objective that they want to have, you are going to experience pain. Yes. That's good with rapid ingress as well. It, it is. It is. Um, yeah, especially since they already mostly hit on twos. That means that you no Deathwing Knights hit on twos. Okay, yeah, Deathwing Knights do. Yeah, yeah. Deathwing Knights hit on twos, which means they don't really need the hit rerolls. So you can use hit rerolls on a unit that hits on threes or fours, mm -hmm. and then they'll have you know reroll to wound plus one to wound and just pile on the saves. Yeah. That's that's a good strat. That's, that's a good strat. Is it a battle right tactic? It is an epic deed. Oh, okay. Well, didn't get lucky still, there. Still a good strat. Yeah. Uh, next is duty unto death, and this is a, a fight on death in the fight phase. So it's. After an unit has selected you, basically you get a 4 plus fight on death for 1 CP. However, if you're on the, the Vowed objective, you get a 3 up fight on death. I like that. Yeah. So, theoretically, the best use case here is you Rapid Ingress to Terminator Squad in. You then rumble up to your the objective that you are now choosing. You go, you hit it, you reroll wounds against it, you're plus 1 to wound against it. You hit it hard and it's yours. Now you're on it, and if your opponent tries to take it from you, 3 up fight on death. Three up, five on death for one CP is very solid. Yeah. Um, Black Templars have that as well. Uh, it's a four up, but if you take the feel no pain one, it's a three up. Um, yeah. So it's a three up. Yep. And it's for one CP. And it is... One CP. Three up feels so much better than four up. Four up, I've seen... I have seen CSM players throw a Chosen Lord unit into something and then swing with like one guy. I have never seen anything less than the Lord and four Chosen swing. Interesting. It's pain. Yeah. Uh, but still, good. another fairly well, good strat. 
to be clear, the time that that happened was when they tried to um, use it illegally. <laughs> so they actually had to go back, and I'm like, no, I would rather that they spent the CP there, please. Yeah. Uh, so Relic Teleportarium is very simple. It's a 1 CP, 3 inch deep strike in your movement phase. So it can't be used on the ingress, but still 1 CP, 3 inch deep strike for a Deathwing unit that is using deep strike. That's solid. Mm -hmm. That's solid. I wish there were some shootier Deathwing. Yep, there isn't a ton of shooty units, but just getting them into position, especially if they, if you take like an Ancient to get the OC up or something, could be a cool contesting play. I, I don't... This is that, that's nice. good. that's good. Yeah. Um, something I will say is that's just Deathwing, not Deathwing infantry. But I don't think there's any non-infantry Deathwing with with deep strike. There are not. I was thinking, oh, maybe arrive from reserve so you can show like a land raider up three away. But no, you have to. Oh yeah, it has deep strike. All right, next stratagem is Wrath of the Lion. This is a nice charge and whirl strat. I like that. So one Deathwing infantry that just ended a charge move. Uh, select an enemy with engagement range. Do stuff. Uh, and you roll 1d6 for each model in your unit, not model that made engagement range. So it's the better version of the two ways that to is, do this. That is a lot better. Every 4 plus is a mortal wound, plus 1 to the roll if the enemy is on the Vout objective. So it's 3 ups against the Vout objective. I like that a lot. To a max of 3. I remember why I wasn't so excited about this. 1 CP do 3 mortals is still good to have in your pocket. A lot of us throw grenades with the hope that we get 3 mortals. Yes, true. Cap of true. three. I don't. Does know. feel a little bad. Why they did cap of three? I, I get not going cap of six, but there are so many numbers in between there. Four and five. Yeah. yeah. Cap of four, I think, would have been fine. Cap of three is just like. Cap of three is like okay. This is often going to be one CP charge and do three morals. Yeah. And that is not a bad strat. It's a, it's honestly it's a fine strat. It's a fine. Strat. Is it a battle tactic? It is an epic deed. However, we do have a battle tactic as the last one. Okay. One, oh, one CP unmatched fortitude in your opponent's shooting phase. When they shoot a Deathwing infantry, subtract one from the wound roll if their strength is greater than your toughness. That's pretty good. It's pretty solid. It's pretty Just solid. a nice, oh, you're trying to shoot me, please, a little bit less of that. I wish we were in every phase, but like... Yeah, I wish this could be shooting or fight phase dearly, yeah. but still... Getting your guy, if they're charging you, you at least have a fight on death, and if they're shooting you, you've got a minus one to wound strat. Yeah. So you've got you've got some options. I mean, I don't hate this detachment, honestly. Yeah. I think this detachment's fine. It's I think I think it's fine as well. It's um, lacking like it, a little something. It's there's there's something missing. To me, it's that it doesn't make Terminators. So all of these, everything we've done has been Deathwing infantry or Deathwing and only applies to infantry. The only stratagem by my account that can work on a non-Deathwing infantry is Armor of Contempt, and the fight on death can be any Deathwing model. So sure, so you can fight your have, Dreadnought on death. You know what? On the It's a sweaty 3-up, but 1 CP to fight a Dreadnought on death would be cool if you hit the 3-up. It's pretty fun. It, they don't do a ton of damage. <laughs> yeah. So what's, what's very funny to me is that I've not found a reason yet for the Land Raider slash Repulsor to get fight on death, other than the fact that you could fight a Repulsor or Land Raider on death on a 4-up, which is obviously not a CP I'm going to spend Wait, very you, often. You're saying why would you bring those? No, I'm saying why do they have the keyword. Oh. Like, they, they made a point to give several units a keyword so that it can fight on death on a 4-plus. Okay. Like my, there's nothing else that... My guess is that originally they meant to limit Deathwing to only go in Deathwing or something? Maybe, maybe they're just looking for lore. But, like, I think that might... It's closer to the case. But anyways, um, so I, I agree this attachment's missing a little something. Plus one to wound is a cool buff. The enhancements are fairly solid. Several of these stratagems are stratagems I like having. Nothing here screams to me as, oh yeah, this is why you take it. Yeah, it's missing like a centerpiece thing. thing. But still, I think it's, it's solid. The it's problem solid. to me is I think if you're taking a lot of Terminators, I, I honestly just think you take the Gladius. It's because there's no maneuverability or deliverability rules here other than 3-inch deep strike. 3-inch and turn 1 deep strike, but neither of those let you get into combat. Yeah, none of those get you, like, activating combat faster. Yeah. I, I honestly I just think you, you run the Gladius, right? Because you are mm -hmm. you get advance and charge. Or advance and shoot. Or advance and shoot. Or fallback shoot and charge, which this list does not have. And mm -hmm. Terminators actually don't hit, like, crazy hard. Yeah, they hit hard enough often, but not, like... They don't just one round the game. But it's also like perfectly plausible that you get charged by like 
an impulsor and don't leave. Yeah. Because you haven't declared oath on it. Because it's not plus one to wound. Because you're not re-rolling wounds. You also may not get your whole unit swinging on it. You may not get your whole unit swinging on it. Like the six inch pile in definitely helps there. But if you don't, you know, kill that target, you're not getting out of combat, chief. And that sucks. Whereas the Gladius does prevent that. The Gladius and this both have very good offensive stratagems. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. But the guy just lets you go quicker. Yeah. I think this is a so obviously there is literally nothing in this detachment that helps anything besides Deathwing. Yes. Every other than Armor Contempt, every single rule is Deathwing coded. Yep. And basically all of it is infantry locked, other than fight on Death and Dreadnought sometimes. Um, but it does still give some cool rules. Then this is definitely something I want to put on the table, and I plan to put on the table. But it, it does seem to lack that like the singular reason. I think what this army is just really good at is as long as people aren't willing to mess with Terminators, it can just take and defend an objective at a time. Yeah. And it's very good at that and playing that primary game. As soon as you run into that problem of, oh god, they kill Terminators, because there's no... The minus one to wound is a cool defensive buff, but there's no passive defensive buffs. They just need an enhancement to let you deep strike six away, or they need an enhance... They needed a strat that gave you, like, real durability, or... Something they either need to let you be. Um, I mean, they, they didn't. Need, they wouldn't need to go this far, yeah. but they would need to either let you mimic the way that Deathwing played for a bit in Ninth Edition, where you literally just couldn't kill it. Um, I did. Glad they, they don't need to go that far, but they do need to either make them tough enough to where they can walk up the board, mm -hmm. or deliverable enough to where you get to hit your opponent and they get to hit you. Yeah. So let me tell you what I think the best part of this detachment is. What is it? It's so I, I think that you build around the plus one to wound. Here's what my favorite part of this is: is there as far as units go, bodyguard units. There are four that have Deathwing, and it's Deathwing Knights, Death uh, or sorry, all of the Terminators. I'm just kind of lumping them. Blade Guard and Companions. The best part, in my opinion, is that Azriel and Asmodai have Deathwing infantry. So what they can join they Hellblasters. They join Desolators. They, I don't actually think they can join Desolators. You take Azrael and you take Asmodai and you join it to two infantry units, and then Hellblasters get plus one to wound against the objective, and that I like. Well, that's pretty dumb. That um, I like. That is pretty good. It's pretty dumb, but it yeah. is pretty good. You get access to all these stratagems, several of which don't matter, but you know what? You get a you can make the Hellblasters minus one to wound against shooting. I mean, it's a hundred percent not what they <laughs> what they I, need here. That's what <laughs> this, I'm, this feels like a uh, an immortals. Devastating wounds sort of deal to me. But then you think they're gonna But then like Azrael is a death wing. He's no, I know. He literally leads the chapter. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and Cryptechs are literally Cryptech and they change it to Cryptech models. Maybe. Yeah. But um <laughs> sh short term, that's my favorite part. Uh what does make me mad, however, is that Lionel Johnson is not part of the Death Wing. That is wild. That is um insulting to me. That is that is quite crazy. No, I, I would be surprised actually if that caught on that they didn't that they don't change it because it's exactly the same thing that happened with the immortals. Potentially, yeah. Uh, for the moment, though, that is as I think the oh, uh, Ezekiel also yeah. is Deathwing. Basically, the three power armor named characters are all Deathwing. Can they all join Hellblasters? Um, yeah, I mean, Azrael can join basically everything. Hellblaster, Hellblaster. Yeah, they can all join Hellblaster. So you're gonna have three units of Hellblasters all getting plus one to wound. Yeah. Yeah, if that catches on even a little bit, it's getting changed. Yeah. I, I'm willing to bet. That's the part that I like the most. Because the Terminator, again, what this detachment does, other than characters running Hellblasters, is it makes Blade Guard, Companions, Deathwing Knights, and, the, and Deathwing slash normal Terminators. Makes those four things better. And though, yes, but it does we'll, make them uniquely better, which is yeah. a problem. And we'll talk about those the unique Dark Angel data, data sheets later. But other than a characters joining something, all of the power of this attachment is tied to those data sheets. Here's the problem. So, yep. The problem is Space Marines, Dark Angels have what nine detachments to choose from? Uh, ten. Ten. They have seven in the Codex and three here. Got it. Ten detachments to choose from. So this has to compete really well against the other nine in order for me to want to run it. And that's kind of a general kind of game-wide issue with Space Marines is that they have so many detachments that uh, only like the Vanguard, the Gladius, or whatever, mm -hmm. see a lot of play. I think those are the Vanguard, the Gladius, the Ironstorm. Yeah. Um, 
But the problem is, so when you look at a, a detachment like this, you go, all right, but what if I want to take my list in a unique direction? Can this detachment help me with that? And the answer is yes. If you want to take a lot of Terminators, this detachment is quite good. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to take like tons of Deathwing Knights and, and Terminators and yeah. whatnot and put them in a list, this detachment is the second best one you can pick. And that means it's left without a home. I think the Gladius is just better at making Terminators good. Um, I like our blaster though. Yes, but that <laughs> is like the clearest parallel to, to Immortals that I can possibly imagine. <laughs> and yet GW has no I, consistency about whether or not they fix these things. True, a 10-man shooting unit getting a buff only because of a keyword granted by a character joining it. They've left that in Tyranids for the entire time it's been there. Tyranids have the same thing. What do they get now? Uh, the winged Tyranid Prime has Fly and Vanguard Invaders, so he gives it to a warrior squad he joined, which doesn't have any of those keywords. Fun. And they keep all those buffs. Well, There's no consistency. There it's is no. purely of whether or not it is deemed to be a problem, I think. I think it's purely if they see it. Because they're not seeing the Vanguard. Uh, I, think, uh, I think they're aware of it. Organisms or whatever. Yeah. But anyways. I think it's all right. I think you can run this. I think it's fine. Yeah. I just, I don't think it stands out at doing, I don't think it stands out at doing the thing that it wants to do. Yeah. So we have one more detachment. Yes. And as you would guess, this is going to be a Ravenwing themed detachment, the Company of Hunters. Interesting. It is going to have to compete with the Stormlands. <laughs> so let's uh, go over the detachment rule, because it is 99% the same as Stormlands with one word changed. They, they change charge to shoot. So you can advance and shoot, fall back, shoot with your whole army, not with Ravenwing. Everything in this detachment is eligible to advance or fall back and shoot. It's all right. That's, that's a good. good. That's a good start. That's a good that's start. That's the better half of Firestorm in my mind. Fall back and shoot is a massive boon for Space Marines because yeah. a lot of their guns are maybe a little close ranged. Yep. And fall back and shoot is better than fall back and charge, in my opinion. It was a huge buff when I was playing Gladius. Like just to be able to go, all right, army wide fall back, shoot and charge. Yeah. And just be able to get my Inceptors out of combat and mm -hmm. shoot something else. Be able to get my eradicators out of combat and shoot. Yeah, so this is a good start. There's also a second rule where outriders gain battle line. No. Cool. No. Enhancements. You can include more of a bad unit if you want. Yeah. You're legally allowed to now include more bad units in your army. Sure. So we've got four enhancements. Uh, Mastercrafted weapon gives a melee weapon equipped by Ravenwing model precision. Yawn. Yeah, you're not killing anything nope. real with this. It doesn't matter. Um... Well, how many points is it, just so I can I mean, have a mark? You're, it doesn't matter. I, I'm, I don't know. It's... Uh, if it's a more than 10, I'm gonna... It's 10, okay. but you're still not taking it. No, you wouldn't take it. No. Um, let's let's actually, let's actually add some context right now. There are two mounted... There are two Ravenwing characters in the game. There is the Bike Chaplain, and there is the Command Squad. The Ravenwing Command Squad has received some changes. We'll talk about them more in the data sheet. Uh, section, but needless to, but what you need to know is that the champion in a Ravenwing command squad is now a character. Does he already have precision? No, no. So you could give him. I don't think you do. You that for ten points because you don't have to. Um, um, Samuel is one, but can't take an enhancement. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for the, the for just for all these enhancements. I was talking to the pedants in the chat who are going to be like, "Excuse me, there are three. Yes. Um, mounted strategist. The bear's unit is eligible to declare a charge in return, which advanced or fell back. So now his unit can shoot, fall back, advance, charge. That's pretty good. That's This is a good enhancement. That's a good enhancement. Yep. Uh, master of Maneuver. Uh, it, the, if the unit starts in reserves, it does not count towards the points limit. And, uh, let's see, for the purpose of setting up that unit on the battlefield, treat the current battle round number as being one higher than it actually is. This is the good version, because this is the one that lets you rapid ingress. Because you count it as being battle round two on battlefield run, and it's not in your movement phase, it's not in your reinforcement step, it is all the time. Okay. I mean, it still comes down to the, to the I don't know, every Everything comes down to the TO. Everything but comes down to the TO, because I'm pretty sure, like, WTC, that doesn't there was a There is a wording difference, but okay. it, it doesn't matter. Um, it's still nice. Doesn't it's, count towards the reserve points. I like, since this is every Raven Wing unit is not going to be deep striking, because none of them can take deep strike. Anyone who can take this enhancement is going to be outflanking, so if you come in turn two, you cannot come in your opponent's opponent's zone. Yep. But uh, pretty, pretty useful. And then the last one is very simple. Your bear's unit has scouts nine. That's pretty good. I like scout nine. I like scout. Scout nine is very good. Those are some good enhancements. Yeah, the Those enhancements are... and the detachment rule so far are both fairly solid for Ravenwing. Yeah. 
Uh, now let's get to the Striders. Let's do it. So, and let's again remember every, so Outriders and every flying vehicle in Space Marines ended up getting the Ravenwood keyword. So remember that for these strats. So one Raven, so Hunter's Trail's command phase, one Ravenwing mounted unit within a range of an objective marker you control, stick is the objective. So bikes can stick objectives. That's good. Sticky yeah. objectives is just a good Sticky objectives is a good thing to have, and it happens in the command phase. It could theoretically be your opponent's. It doesn't have to be yours. Okay. So, solid. Solid. Uh, armor of Contempt. It's exactly what you think. Talon Strike. One CP in your shooting order. I don't know why Armor of Contempt isn't in the top left. Yeah, it usually no. is. Uh, your shooting phase or the fight phase. Um, Ravenwing Mounted Unit. That is not shot or fight. Gets plus one to wound against an infantry or mounted character unit. So, little situational. Only works on bikes. But when you pull it off, a 1 CP plus one to wound is still pretty useful. And okay. I think it'll come up enough that I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have it. Yeah. There will be games where it doesn't matter at all. There will be games where it's actually pretty cool. Yeah. I, I think it's all right. Like, plus one to wound is just, it's just a good rule. Yeah, like, just a solid thing to have. And the things you want it against are usually going to be led by a character. Now, you don't get against vehicles, which yeah. would be nice. Be useful, yeah. Uh, vehicles, monsters, that sort of thing mm -hmm. uh, is oftentimes where you want the plus one to wound. But, I, like, I'm not going to turn it down. One CP plus one to wound is, yeah. is quite good. Yeah. Then, Death on the Wind. Uh, so, uh, one Ravenwing army that, one Ravenwing unit. So, this is not mounted. This is now Ravenwing. Everything to this point, other than Armor Condemned, has been mounted. When you shoot, pick the... Um, so after you have shot, your opponent takes a Battle Shock test. And if they're within six inches of a Ravenwing unit, minus one from that Battle Shock test. Mm, so nah. the, the problem is that in this detachment, there is zero synergy for Battle Shock. Like, there's no Battle Shock and. Battle Shock is best on armies like Chaos Knights or Tyranids where a battle shock unit suffers a further penalty or you get another bonus against it. So there is one use for this that I can say. Because your opponent will unbattle shock before they score points. So this will not deny them points. It's only really there for the charge and fight phase. Exactly. So if you shoot somebody and you're and you think, all right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna shoot them, battle shock them so they can't use their defensive strats, then I'll shoot them with my real unit. They're just going to use their defensive strat against the first unit that shoots. And almost all of them carry through for the rest of the phase. Yep. So you you will not strip defensive abilities during the shooting phase. <laughs> what you could do, theoretically, is strip defensive mechanics for future phases because their strats will fall off, but the battle shock won't. Yep. And so for like the fight phase, if they have like minus one damage or something, now they can't activate it. Problem is, I don't really see this army doing much combat. Doing much combat. Not at all. That is the problem. This would actually be a much better stratagem, in my opinion, in the the, north, the basic detachment. Yeah. Because then you're actually... But, like, the, the best melee unit you're going to be taking is Black Knights, which we'll discuss that in a second. Um, <laughs> yes. So, so, I don't think this has any use cases at all, really. Um, it, it doesn't affect points. You've already scored your yours. secondaries. It affects only your secondaries, and, which is something I was about to say. And the game primary. So, it... Sure. It, it, it affects... It does not affect your scoreboard at the start of your turn. Mm -hmm. It does not affect your opponent's score at the start of their turn. The only one it lets you do is it like lets you cleanse an objective you couldn't have cleansed otherwise, which comes up rarely. Storm a hostile. Storm hostile, but then they'll still get their points for it. And like, yeah, it's, yeah it, it's, and, and it's, also you make your plan around it and they just pass their battle shock. And you're like, damn. Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah. not crazy. No, it's, it's pretty, it's quite bad actually. One CP for high speed focus. This is a battle tactic. And your Ravenwing unit, not mounted, so this could be the speeders, is minus one to hit when they get shot at. Not minus one to hit and wound? No. So not the Stormlands? No. Okay. It also doesn't work. Yeah. Just one Ravenwing unit is minus one to hit. In shooting. Okay. It's Ta a battle tactic, but you can't make it free. It, 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 yeah, because you don't have any captains. So, yep. And then the final one is Rapid Reprisal. At the end of your opponent's shooting phase, put one Ravenwing unit into Strategic Reserves. That's pretty good. Yeah, it, that's, that's actually, not an engagement range. So here's the no. That's actually really good because you go into strategic reserves and then you can rapid ingress. But then you have to wait a turn. You do have to wait a turn. So you that. go in. So you in your opponent. Oh, it's, yeah, it's not. Yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah, not. It doesn't. It doesn't have bad. the cool timing. Damn. And it's only Ravenwing. But again, not mounted. So you could use this to put us to move a speeder around. I mean, a lot of the time they're shooting units, so it doesn't matter. Like you just teleport out and then yeah. You, come down on the side of the board and start shooting. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I, I, I think it's actually really good. 
I don't know what unit I want to use this on. Well, surely all of the really damaging shooting yeah. Ravenwing units. Obviously. The, the obviously those. Is. But like the Black Knights have rapid fire weapons, so I don't want to be coming nine inches away because they're an eighteen okay. inch rapid fire weapon. I'd rather just advance and shoot and then go get into position that way. Um speeders, I I guess. It's kind of useful for secondary plays late game. It's a uh, nice stratagem. I don't think it's a great stratagem. It, it is a stratagem you will get value out of by having in your book. Because you tell your opponent you have it, and then they have to start worrying about, are five Black Knights going to show up from behind me and shoot something important? I guess, yeah. It's, yeah, I it's mean, not... Like, you don't have to use it for them to yeah. get value out of it, right? Yeah. It, it's, it's a fine stratagem, but overall, we have, a, I think, a really cool detachment role. Fairly solid enhancements. The stratagems... In general, not only are all the stratagems besides Armor Contempt are Ravenwing only, and those data sheets are not traditionally ones being taken that often in Space Marines. Right now, yeah. You would sometimes see Talon Masters and Vengeances in Dark Angel lists. We will talk about that shortly. However, suffice to say, you will no longer be seeing Talon Masters ever again, maybe in the narrative game, and because uh, they're gone. Yep. And then the, the, the Land Speeder Vengeance, we don't know points yet. But the Valiant Speeder Vengeance data sheet is not what it used to be. Yes. And it's the politest way I can put that. Death on the Wind in Company of Hunters might actually be the worst stratagem in the game. Mm, I think there's... There are some impressively bad... There are. The problem is Death on the Wind literally doesn't matter. I, it's not good. I'll agree it's not good. It's a bad stratagem. Um, most of this sticking objective is fine. You have to take a mounted unit, which is annoying because that is either... Outriders, lol, or Black Knights, sure. Let's let's just take a second to acknowledge the fact that you, so far, while talking about the Ravenwing detachment and the Deathwing detachment, have been most excited in both detachments about things that are not Ravenwing and not Deathwing. Yeah, I'm most excited that my Inceptors can, and Centurions can fall back and shoot in this detachment because the stratagems, because the, the army rule affects everyone. And the stratagems affect only data sheets that I am currently not incentivized to take. Because the stratagems are the in incentive, and the stratagems don't do that much. I like plus one to wound, kind of. Armor of Contempt is always good. Sticky Objectives kind of makes me want a Black Knight unit. Death on the Wind doesn't really do much. I'm not going to plan around it, certainly. High Speed Focus doesn't do much. I'm not going to plan around it. Rapid Reprisal is cute, but I don't think it's that important. No. If it was... If it was during your opponent's movement phase, then it would actually be really, really good. Because you could then wrap it in Gross off it. But oh, like, of course. You can't. The, yeah, but, but it's not. Uh, yeah. The enhancements and the stratagems combine to tell me you should really take at least one Black Knight unit. Well, I, and think, I think they were aiming to make you take more than one. <laughs> but the, the, I want a Black Knight unit that scouts. Maybe one that advances and falls back. That's, those are cool. Advanced and charges. And... Yeah, advance and charge, advance, fall back. Charge, that's cool. The art does the shooting part. And that's all it. of all of this is telling me you want a black knight, a big black knight squad that carries the scout enhancement. And I think I'm good. And then I think I take a space marine army that falls back and shoots. Yeah. And I have armor contempt. And I think that's all that I'm doing in the in the company of hunters. Yeah. I, I think it's nothing made the land speeders more appealing than they currently are. I don't know what they would have needed to do. Probably a detachment rule that calls out Ravenwing and then makes them better like across the, the board better the detachment rule is actually really good no the detachment rule is fine but it I'm doesn't affect saying. ravenwing different than anyone else so i'm not going to take ravenwing yeah i mean all of the enhancements and the strats affect ravenwing and yeah. the strats are mediocre at best at best and the several enhancements are several are bad the enhancements are good but they want you to go on a unit that is also good and those, those don't really exist in ravenwing um, with the purely the Ravenwing keyword. I'm just, I'm just glad that you can't put Thundercat in this attachment. Why? Yeah, this still... is worse than the <laughs> I know, I know it is. So this is worse than the Stormlance at being the Stormlance. Yeah. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, It's yes. better than the Stormlance because you don't have to take Mounted to get any benefits. Because the Stormlance is purely Mounted. Yeah. Well, but the Advanced and Charge, Fallback Charge is forever. We're the same as Master's Maneuver. Um, this detachment does make me sad. I think that this is going to be a generic shooting space marine detachment that is always fast, falls back and shoots, and I take a big Ravenwing, uh, Deathwing Knight, or sorry, Ravenwing Command Squad blob. I'm going to be... one big bike unit. I'll be honest, I think it's worse than that. I think it's you just won't see it. Well, yeah, yes, I agree you're not going to see it. If I take it, 
I'm going to take a Space Marine Good Stuff Army with Inceptors and a Centurion Squad, and I'm going to take one big Black Knight Squad and say, cool, I'm Ravenwing. Yep. I'll, uh, take, I, I'll take my choice of these two enhancements, probably Scout, maybe maybe the, the charge stuff. Frankly, I don't care about the bikes charging because I've it read would them. have points would have to be ridiculous to make you actually want to take yeah, a mass it, amount of bikes in this. And again, let, let's clarify that the points in the back of the book we are ignoring because those have been historically inaccurate. And so at this point, I think reading them is only going to give me bad ideas. Current MFM points, Black Knights are not appealing, particularly. The enhancements make me want to take one. The stratagems and enhancement package does not make me want to take two. Yeah. So, I mean, well, you can say, you know, that the Deathwing, uh, the Deathwing detachment is like second best at buffing Deathwing, and I did. Um, sure. okay. The the Ravenwing detachment doesn't even make you want to take Ravenwing. Doesn't. Whereas the Deathwing detachment, legitimately, you do want to take Deathwing. Yeah. If you play it. I think they needed to make the advanced fallback shoot. I think they needed to make that Raven Wing only and then make the stratagems like good. Yeah. But as it is, it's just like, wow, the best part of this doesn't affect everything, not just Raven Wing. Why, why, why am I Raven Wing and Raven Wing? Well, the, the real problem here, I think, mm -hmm. is that um, if you did that, you would just be making whatever unit used the broken stratagem on good. And then the rest of the army is not awesome. Yeah, but we can we can wish and hope and dream. I think the Raven Wing detachment, unfortunately, I think it will be rarely seen. I would agree. Yeah, I think you're going to see people um, messing around with it, and then they're going to just not have a lot of success. Yeah, I, I think by the time we're in like April, it's just not going to be a factor. And they, like I think it will be two months of people like playing it just because they like because every, they want it to. Yeah, every so often you'll see someone in an event with it, and it'll be like a novelty sort of deal. I think. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, the rest of this. I love Ravenwing. I bought I, a bunch of Ravenwing I'd like love, I'd love several months ago. Be, yeah. um, um, but uh, no. the rest of this book is all the data sheets. Let me just make three quick mentions because there are three data sheets that are missing: the Talon Master, the Deathwing okay. Command Squad, and the Deathwing Strike Master are no longer appearing in this book. They are not supported by any current models that Games Workshop sells. One would assume that they will soon have Legends rules. However, those have not currently been published. And there's no reason to believe they're coming back anytime soon. Yeah. So for the moment, I know I mentioned, oh, Talon Master's not going to be seen. Deathwing Command Squad's not going to be seen. Those are gone without replacement. It's not like the Deathwing Command Squad is now an upgrade you take to a Deathwing Squad. Nope. It no longer exists in any fashion. If you have a Terminator Apothecary, there is nothing. He is just a Terminus with Power. Terminator with Power for now. Yep. That's all he is. He doesn't. There is no Apothecary Terminator. There is no Ancient Terminator in this book. There's just the generic one in the thing. There is no Terminator Champion in this book. That is just a cool captain now, if you have yep. a model. And if you have a, an Ancient, he is now the Ancient data sheet that is in the Codex. That's all he is. Yeah, I don't think they needed to do that, to be quite okay, honest with you. Either. Um, but uh, I suppose they did not want to include both a Deathwing Command Squad and a Deathwing Knights in the same box. I guess it was difficult to fit or something. I don't know. So let's talk through the data sheets, and I'm not going to talk through every point of the data sheets. I'm going to talk through the changes. Yes. I have combed through this very thoroughly, and I've tried to identify all the changes I can. Lionel Johnson is the exact same as before, but his Storm Shield, the Emperor Shield, no longer gives the minus one to wound modifier. It might have been minus one to hit as well. He is no longer either of those things. So yeah. he still bounces on a six of a save in melee. He bounces one mortal wound. That's what the shield does. He still has a three up invul. He is still a Primarch who hits extremely hard and has fights first built in. Um, he still has his Feel No Pain Against Mortal aura that he can choose, or he can choose plus one to hit in melee, or he can choose the um, aura of once a turn make your opponent take a battle shock test when they try to do a stratagem. I've actually kind of thought about the, the battle shock thing just because it, it'd be cool. You know, you, you make them pay the CP for a stratagem, fail a battle shock test, and then still pay the CP but not get the benefits. Yeah, I mean, it's good if it goes off. But it's a once per turn battle shock test with a 12, and that's all it is. Yeah. Um, and I think it was just minus one to wound. I don't think it was minus one to hit as well. Yeah. Um, but losing minus one to wound and not getting anything is a bit wonky on a yep. unit that you were not seeing, that was not seeing play. Yeah. He's too expensive for a pure beat stick that can still randomly just fall over like i played him once i built an army designed to like to like make him good and i played him once in like a like a fun a funsies game mm -hmm. and you know what happened he fell over to like four attacks because they just happened to hit and wound and i failed my saves 
Yeah. And it, it that can happen. And because his dev has, wounds are devastating. Dev wounds just clear he has no defense against dev wounds. He's just a ten um, wound guy. He's just a ten wound dude. So he isn't like he's not the easiest thing to kill, but he is very expensive and he can just die. And paying that many points for just a pure beater mm -hmm. that okay. can also just fail to do that job is not awesome. Yep. Uh, next is the new kit, the Inner Circle Companions. Um, so these are kind of what you'd expect. It's a three wound veteran space marine. And I will know that they're OC2, and presumably that's because the artwork that we've seen, we have not received the models yet, the artwork that we've seen indicates that you can build one of these guys with a banner. The banner does not have any rules. Interesting. But I've seen, like, there's art, like, there's pictures of a model carrying a banner, but that's not a thing reflected. They just all happen to be OC2. So if it is a multi-pose kit, you can see people leaving the banner off to save height on their models. Yeah, which I think is about to happen. But I, my guess is that it's not a multi-pose kit and that you must have No, because it's funny because there's here you can see five of them where they none of them have a banner. But then like there's a, there's art of a banner in the um like in the, the pretty picture section. Here's the pretty picture section. I'm gonna find this. I'm just like I know. Yeah, that guy. That guy is the, the ancient you can build in the squad. I see. But, uh, but you, but you, you don't just won't. You just won't. Right, you just, well, you just won't. But anyways, they're OC2, three wound space marines. So defensively, it's a space marine. Three wound space marines legitimately are annoying to kill right now. We've seen it in Chosen. We've seen it in Sword Brethren. That can be pretty good right now. Yeah. Cool. Uh, these are three to six mana, not five to ten. It's oh. So presumably the kit is three models. I've also seen it in Blade Guard too. Yep. Just Blade Guard as well are just kind of annoying to deal with on mass. And they are just carrying a heavy bolt pistol. No shooting options. There's no warrior options at all here, for the record. And everyone comes with a uh, Calibanite. Calibanite. Calibanite, yeah. Sure. Great Calibanite. sword. Uh, and that has two profiles. It's a strike and a sweep. The strike is four attacks at weapon skill three. Six one two, lethal hits. The sweep is four attacks. Six one one, sustained two. So basically, when you fight, you choose to either have damage two lethal hits or sustained two. If you're going to single wound models, you take sustained two. Anything else, you take lethal hits yep. with two damage. Um, that profile is not exciting AP1. to me. AP1 is a death sentence for a melee unit. It is. AP1, you need to have so many attacks, and these guys just don't have that. Yeah. Um, you're going to hear this a couple of times. I think the Gladius is really good for these guys if mm -hmm. you want to run them because it solves that AP issue. It's the only way that I'm aware of to get them plus one AP in combat. And they need it. They, the AP1 goes to AP0 against like half the armies out there. Yeah. And then it bounces off a two up, bounces off a three up. These guys don't have a lot of reliability. No. Nope. There's they, no rerolls on the wound. They they obviously, plus, Oath exists. They get plus one to wound if they target a character, and yeah. they are minus one to hit if they're led by a character. No, 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 no. They get plus one to hit against characters. Not wound. Plus one to hit plus one against to hit. characters. I see. And while a character leads them, they're minus one to hit. So they're minus one to hit if you lead them with a character. They're plus one to hit if they target a character. Um, but man, they just don't output enough dice to get around the fact that they're AP1. You could theoretically take them in the Deathwing Detachment and get them plus one to wound and reroll wounds, which helps with the fact that they don't otherwise have any rerolls to their wounds. Um, but that's only against the objective marker. Uh, they but, but they're still AP1. Yeah, they're Deathwing. Okay. Yeah. So like, yeah, they're, I mean, that, that's fans. the main problem is that they're, we're going to come back to this in a, in a hot second. Like, AP1. We're going we're gonna to come back to AP1 being a really big problem. Um, mm -hmm. But it is. It's a huge problem for them. A lot of the top armies have either Armor of Contempt or have an invuln breakpoint that is AP2. Yeah. Right? Terminators, AP2, also Armor of Contempt. Um, like, World three Eaters. Of armor, five of yeah. World Eaters are a lot of three of Armor, five of and You're just giving them four ups? Yeah. That feels weird. You go into Space Marines, these guys get blanked by a lot. Because yeah. one CP, they don't do any damage. So, data shoot's a little underwhelming. Ignoring the points in the back of the book, we don't know what the points are going to be when the MFM gets updated. Just side to side, blade guard versus a companion. I would rather have a blade guard than a companion if, they, if they're the same points cost. Yep, so a blade guard is one less point of strength, no lethal hits, but what they do get is plus one AP. So on yeah. offense, they're a little better. Not a lot better, a, a little. little better, but then they have an invuln. A four up invuln, and then they get that choice of rerolling ones to hit or ones to save when they attack, which is cute. One, rerolling ones to hit is a nice. 
Yeah. Is nice to ensure that you don't need oath everywhere. Yeah, these are nice, plus one to hit. Yeah, against characters, so it's like that, that's a lot of time. Yeah, but plus one AP is probably better than lethal and strength six, but it's comparable. And then four pinball versus not, just ends it right there. Yeah, no, Bladeguard are better. The only thing these guys have that Bladeguard don't is OC two. Yeah, that's it. And I'm not going to say OC two isn't a big deal. It 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 is it's cool. It, it is nice. But, but it's not enough by itself. Yeah. They are a brawly unit that does not actually brawl. Yep. They, if you, their closest comparison actually is not even Blade Guard, it's Sword Brethren. Yeah. You can't take both, right? Because you're either Black Templars or Dark Angels. Yeah, sure. But Sword Brethren are significantly better. Yeah. Sword Brethren is an unfair comparison in my mind because Sword Brethren are an amazing unit. Yes. They're, they're insanely good. And I, I'm, the worse than Sword Brethren is not damning. Worse than Blade Guard is damning. That's there true. are so many things worse than Sword Brethren that still get taken because Sword Brethren is a very high bar. Blade Guard is middle. Blade Guard are a mid unit that often doesn't get taken, and this is as data sheet to data sheet. We don't know points yet. In the back of the book, they are listed as more than Blade Guard. However, those points aren't real, so I'm not going to think about them too much. If they're equal points, Blade Guard just are better. I'll say that I think in the Gladius. If you are using um, that strat on them for plus one for Lance and plus one AP, their offense is better than Blade Guards. Their defense is still significantly worse. But like, wouldn't Blade Guard also get Lance and plus one AP? They would, but I think the, the jump from one to two is yeah. better than the jump from two to three, and they have strength and lethal. I guess yeah. So yeah, maybe. Yeah. What a thing that bugs me about them is because they're six man and they want to be led, they don't do transports very well. Because if you take a six man and then lead them, they're a seven man. And seven man doesn't often like any transports. They needed the sword brethren treatment where you get five to ten. Yep. Because five to ten feels really good. <laughs> three to six feels quite bad because you're either leading yeah. a three man, which and is garbage, or you can't fit in a transport. And they do have Tacticus, so they don't go into Rhinos. They can go to Land Raider, but that's a lot of points. But theoretically, a Land they go Raider is. Impulsor. Uh, not, nope. No, 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 not Impulsor, sorry. Repulsor. Yeah, they could go to Repulsor, yes. Yeah. Um, they, can, they can go in an Impulsor, they just can't go with a character, and they definitely. They want. They want a character, but like they don't, right? Because they don't, they don't buff the character. No, they just get a minus one hit. Because like most characters hit on twos. Yep. So the plus one hit doesn't matter, whereas like Blade Guard at least buff the character because they get real ones to hit on yep, the character. Um, I'm just very not impressed with their stat line at all. Agreed. Asriel, as far as I can tell, is completely unchanged as a data sheet. All his weapons are the same, his profile is the same, his rules are the same. Everything, as far as I can tell, is unchanged. The only thing that has changed with Asriel is leader, in that his leader got rolled back and he can no longer join Company Heroes. My guess is this was written before, or separately to Space Marines, which yep. is a... Funny An thing. Interesting um, way of designing your codexes. Yeah. But other than that, and maybe the FAQ company here is back in, uh, he can join everything you'd expect, including Inner Circle Companions. So he can join all of the Tacticus Marines except for Desolator Squads, and he can join Inner Circle Companions. Yeah. He uh, hits pretty hard. Yeah, Azrael is good. Azrael was previously one of the best Space Marine characters in the game. As far as I can tell, he has not changed in any capacity I was able to notice. Okay, so if you join a character to his unit, right, because I assume there's some characters out there that... Lieutenants can, can multi-join. Okay, if you give the lieutenant mm -hmm. the, the crit fives lethal, he gives the lieutenant sustained. Yes, that is true. That guy kind of hits. Uh, the lieutenant can't take the enhancement because the lieutenant's not deathly. That doesn't hit. Sad. 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 Uh, Asmodai. Asmodai, as far as I can tell, is the exact same data sheet as before, with the exception that his weapon is mildly different. Uh, he is still a four wound character, despite getting the Primaris Glob, um, which is fine. Primaris, um, like a lot of Primaris characters, are still four. Um, he still gives his unit reroll hits. Uh, that's melee only. He, at the start of the fight phase, gives a six inch aura of. Character units must take a battle shock at minus one, which is actually very funny. It's a six inch aura of the end of the fight phase. Every character than six has to take a battle shock minus one. Super funny into CSM where they might just fall flat on their face and not be able to um, real hits and wounds. Real hits and wounds. It's kind but of the same as Dante. Dante has the same um, yeah. take a battle shock check. I think it's even if there was one. any detachment at all 
that did better against Battleshocked units, I'd be a little more interested in this, but it is what it is. Um, and then if he kills a character in melee, one CP. You gain a CP. It's like a lifter. So he gives them reroll hits, in and melee. then he does the weird Battleshock stuff. Yeah. He seems decent. He seems fine. He, he also doesn't... Strong. He doesn't hit soft. He doesn't yeah. hit hard, but he doesn't hit soft. His combat is 5 attacks at 6-2-2, two, two, or 8 attacks at 5-2-1, all weapon skill two, all, all weapon skill 2, no special rules added on. That's a slight glope of his melee weapon. He used to be a slightly worse Crozius with 3 extra attacks at the sweep profile. Now he's either eight attacks the sweep profile or five the crocus. It's a, I think it's a very mild glow up by like a point of AP. It's not significant. He is a space marine character who will beat up other space marines at a non-zero rate, but he himself does not solo the squad of dudes. He also does get murdered by a lot of other characters. He is a four wound character, so if you hit him, he's not that tough. He's a four pin one three wounds. He's like I, four I presume pin four wounds. Yeah, sorry, four pin one four wounds. He's not particularly expensive in the current rules. He's also leadership five because he's a chaplain, so like, it's cool. Reroll hits is good. Yeah, that's cool. That's a little bit of oath redundancy. Most importantly, in my opinion, he has the Deathwing keyword. And you can therefore slap him on a non-Deathwing unit and give him Deathwing rolls, and that is the best part about him. It's... Belial. <laughs> Belial. So, Belial is the exact same as before. I looked because he had a new model, and usually new models come with something. I cannot find a single change to Belial's data sheet. I checked the AP of the Stormbolter, I checked his rules, and... No, I'm not, I'm not looking for differences, I'm just yeah, looking for what, like what he actually does. He, he gives his unit precision on a um, critical hit in a melee. He himself is fairly good in melee and is precision built in. If you wouldn't mind reading his uh, sword out. His sword is precision, six attacks, a hit on twos at six, two, two. Perfectly reasonable. Perfectly reasonable. He Not will crazy. scoop some characters. He won't scoop tough characters. He could kill Asmodai in one shot. He he very well could kill Asmodai in one and shot. And then he does a weird uh, reflective mortal whenever he makes a save against attacks allocated to him. Not when he makes a save, just when an attack is allocated. It's like on a fork or something? Yep. Yeah. You got it. So he doesn't have to make a save. If you allocate a melee attack to Belial on a four plus, you take a mortal wound. However, I believe that he has to be alive for that to work. And if he dies, because it's after they finish attacking. Um, but it's when it's allocated. It might trigger even if he dies. Maybe. Um, but it's a maximum of six dice. He basically grenades you if you fight him. Yeah. Which but I think is pretty he, decent. Which is cool. But it's him. So if you fight his unit and they never make the attacks to him, nothing no ordinary happens. But hey, you but got then he gets to punch you. Back. And I assume at some point, if they're going to kill the unit, they have to allocate attacks. Yeah, it, it's cool. I think it's a cool rule. I think, I think it's a good rule, even. Yeah. Um, now, comparing him to a Terminator uh, captain, is he significantly better? No. Is he a little better? Maybe he gives crit hits to his unit on uh, gives sorry precision on crit hits, which is not awesome. Sometimes that's cute. Sometimes it's cute. Sometimes it's cute. But most of the time, precision is setting a unit up to get hit by a real combat unit because yeah. you killed the buffing character in the following turn. You get in. It's not yeah. your plan. Usually, you do precision the hard way, where you go <laughs> through a unit and then get to the characters yeah. afterwards. Everything has precision once the rates are dead. That's right. Um, so and he has enough precision to kill the stupid character leading he could, the race. He could, he could potentially could, yeah. So Belial's fine. He doesn't excite me terribly, but he's fine. No. Um, he has no defensive differences from a Terminator captain. He's a he just zaps he's just, he's just a guy. Um, and then we have Ezekiel. Ezekiel, as far as I can tell, is completely unchanged, but he's still kind of cool. He has an anti chaos two plus melee weapon that's four attacks at six two three or six two d three. Pardon me. Um, Dev wounds? No. Okay. His gun is when you overcharge it. It's one shot, 12 inch range. Strength 6, AP 2, damage D6. Which when you overcharge it is anti-character 4 plus, devastating wounds, hazardous, precision, psychic. So sometimes he zaps a character within 12 inches. Sometimes. Yeah. 12 inches is a bit short. <laughs> 18 would have been... He would have... But it's so random, yeah. right? You have to hit, you have yeah. to wound, you have to roll a 4 plus, <laughs> then you have to roll enough wounds on the D6. Yeah. Other than that, he is a uh, walking librarian. He's tougher than a normal librarian. This isn't a change, but he's a 2-up armor and a 4-up in same as before. And he gives his unit a 4-up feel no pain against psychic, but this is psychic could, same as every other librarian. And his rule is in your shooting phase, you can select one enemy unit within 18 inches, and that enemy unit must take a battle shock test. So, in your shooting phase, pick an enemy with an 18, cause Mind a battle shock. No. That's... It's... Cute. I mean, again, the timing is wrong. If it no, was, it's, it's in your shooting phase, it's not when you attack. 
Okay, so you can battle shock them before you they could shoot. theoretically battle shock a Nurgle unit that's 18 inches away, and then if it fails, it can't use the lot option. I was mostly talking about it's it, it is in the right fit, right timing to actually yep. turn off your opponent's strats for shooting. Mm -hmm. It is in the wrong timing to affect points, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. And other than some new secondaries, it doesn't change much. Like if he could do it in the command phase, I'd actually like him quite a bit. If there was a, no, no command phase, you get to move first. I actually think this is better than command phase. No, no, no. I, I know the for... primary, like theoretical, like, it affects contesting primary, but I feel like Darkhand's already good at it. Anyways, it's fine. There's no battle shock synergy besides you make your opponent battle shocked. I don't think his E kill's very good. No, I think he's pretty bad. Um, if it was in command phase, me personally, I would consider him more just to stand in the center of all your objectives and just be like, contest. All right, you battle shock. All right, now I get my points. Yeah, maybe. Um, Samuel. Samuel is, uh, I believe, unchanged. He is a 7-wound T5 biker man with a 4 pinball. He still has a Mastercrafted Plasma Can, which is just a, master, a Plasma Can that doesn't have to overcharge to get damage to. And he has a Twin Storm Bolter. The Raven Sword is the same as before. It's uh, 6 attacks at 6-3-2, some nice AP3. That is pretty good. It's also sustained hits, too. It's a fairly good combo weapon. That is, that's actually quite a good combo. It's, it's not bad. That. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Six attacks were sustained too? Damn, Samuel kind of slaps. He gives his unit advance and charge. Of course, he can join Outriders and uh, Black Knights. And then he forces Desperate Escape tests on enemies that fall back. So if you fall back from Samuel's unit, you have to take a Desperate Escape unless you're a monster vehicle. You know, he also... Um... So the fact that he has sustained two on his weapon means that when he is the oath target, it's like it when could, he hits the oath target, off. it hits really hard. So yeah. you reroll everything that isn't a six. 100%. And you can get quite a few yeah. hits that way. Samuel, strength six, no wound modifiers is merely fine. He is not Deathwing, as you'd expect. Um, if he you also, were Deathwing. He's also, a bite, he's also, you know, he's got the grenades keyword. He's cool. Um, he, he, I think he's perfectly solid. He doesn't argue there's no reason to include Samuel besides himself. He doesn't buff significantly. Advance and charge is nice. Advance is it advanced shoot and charge? Well oh yeah yes. it is advanced shoot and charge. I'm sorry, I was thinking of Ravenwing where you already had advance and shoot, but fair enough. If you I, took him in a different detachment. Yeah, I would be strongly considering charge. taking different detachments with him. Yeah. Um so yeah he's that. There is the small problem where because they changed how the Ravenwing command squad works, they can't join they can't both join a unit. Interesting. Because they're both leaders, and you, you can't do two leaders in Space Marines unless you have a specific rule, which basically only lieutenants and apothecaries have. But still, perfectly fine data sheet. Hits fairly hard, likes Oath. He's a cool bike ca character, and he gives his unit advantage to do stuff. Sustained one, I would be like, all right. But sustained, sustained two, two with AP three hits. It's pretty solid. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty solid. No problems at all with Samuel. I think he's cool. Lazarus, unchanged as far as I can tell. He gives his unit 4-up fight on death, and he himself, not his unit, has a 3-up feel no pain against psychic attacks and mortal wounds. Just him, not his unit. He also has an anti-psyker 2 plus 6-3-2 power sword. It's cool. It's alright. just a captain who doesn't do any stratagem stuff, and no, that you're... means he's worse than a normal yeah, captain. Yeah, you're, you're not taking him. He uh, personally is better against psychers and psychic attacks himself, and that's not why you take him. <laughs> yeah, it's, I want the leader to do something for his unit. Uh, we are now onto the actual data sheets. Deathwing Terminator squads. The profile is a Terminator. The weapons are Terminators. You can take a plasma cannon. Other than that, this looks exactly like a normal Space Marine Terminator squad. Its rules are slightly better. Okay. It gets Teleport Homer the exact same as normal. You pick, put down your Teleport Homer, you can zero CP Rapid and Grisnare it. Cool. It's, it's all it's, right. It's, it's, it's nice to have. Uh, the Deathwing rule is the same as the Index Space Marine Terminators, where they ignore hit modifiers against the Oath target and get plus one to hit the Oath target. The Space Marine Codex actually nerfed that, but they, they have kept the Index version. So they ignore Ballistic Skill and, and Weapon Skill and hit modifiers against the Oath target. Whereas normal Terminators, Space Marine Terminators are plus one to hit the Oath target. This is plus one and ignore hit mods against the other target. That is slightly better. That, yeah, that, I mean, that's yeah. not a bad uh, rule to have. Slightly better, you could take plasma cannons. I don't think I'm going to take plasma cannons. But can you not take an assault cannon? You can. You can. You can take assault cannon. You can take everything normal. Also, you can take a plasma cannon. So this is a very slight upgrade on a regular Terminator unit. And it also does come with a Watcher in the Dark, which means once a game you pop a fort film against mortals. Okay, it is... Yeah. 
It is a it is real amount better than a regular Terminator. Absolutely. Unit. You would not take a regular Terminator unit in Dark Angels. You would just take this if the points are comparable. Yes. We don't know if the points will be the same or comparable or if what. If the points are any amount more. Yeah, I, 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 think I, I, I think I'd pay five per ten. Well, five per five more to get access to Ignore Hits and a Watcher. Oh, the only other difference is in War Gear, just to prove that I read this very thoroughly. The Terminator Sergeant in this unit cannot take a Power Fist. Has to take a power weapon. Ah, that is worse. Yep. So can't take a power fist, has to take a power weapon. You get the watcher in the dark, which is not worth nothing. That's pretty good. And if, then you if get that to ignore applies to devastating wounds at all, then yeah, I'm full stop, full yeah. speed ahead. This if it did, better. but it just doesn't. But legitimately, the fact that you can't take five power fists or four power fists and chain fist is much worse than you, a regular term. You can take as many chain fists as you want. You just have to have one power. Was sword. there a restriction on how many chain fists you could take in the uh, no. on the other unit? No, it's exactly the same. You can take all chain fists if you want in loyal space marines, like regular ones. No. The only difference is that the sergeant is stuck with a power sword instead of a power fist, and then you get slight you get access to a plasma cannon that I'm not convinced you want, and then you get plus one you get a better buff against the other because you ignore hit mods and you get a watcher. They think that is much more positive than negative. If the points are equal, it's these every time. If the points are very close, it's probably these. But maybe if it's tight. If it's 10 per 5, it's regular yeah. ones. If it's However, 5 per 5 more, then it's probably I these I will guys. point out that this Deathwing Terminator squad no longer has any of the melee options. No longer has Thunder Hammer, Storm Shield, Lightning Claws. You can still just take an Assault, an assault Terminator squad. And in fact, you possibly you will. You possibly will, but if you want a Watcher... No longer the the and the mix and matching, so where it's eight Thunder Hammer Storm Shield, two Cyclone Miss Launchers, gone. Oh, that's a big deal. None of that. Yep. Yeah, you I can mean, take the normal assault terminator data sheet. Otherwise, definitely Terminator Squad is better than a normal one. I mean, we're mostly arguing here between, you know, the various merits of vanilla versus French vanilla, but yeah, like, cares? it's the same. It's a shooting terminator unit. Death Which means Knights. you're probably not gonna take it. Probably not taking it. Deathwing Knights, the other Terminator squad, sick new models. Um, first thing I'll mention is that they are now five mans. They are not five to ten. They are five mans. There is no sixth model ever. It is a five man squad, and maybe you attach a leader. With that said, the profile defensively is unchanged. It is a four wound Terminator with OC1 because it has a storm shield and four pinball and all the good stuff. It is still minus one damage. It gained a teleport homer, a thing it did not have before, which is cute. It yeah, cute more than like meaningful. It's, it's not nice. really. It'll sometimes save you a CP. Teleport Homer doesn't let you do it for free and again, right? No, no. Okay, so yes, no. I'm not not a big fan. Yep. Um, if you take multiple of these and you want to put multiple in reserves for some reason, you can put multiple markers down and then be like, oh well, this one's active now and then this one's active, but that's uh, bad because you're just saving a CP and in exchange you're putting a lot of your army into reserves. Yeah. Um, I don't mind ingressing a Deathwing Knight squad. So I like ingressing like it, one, but yeah. I'm saying ingressing multiples. Having a teleport homer is just a maybe bonus that you can also ignore. So it's, it's strictly upside, but it's not a ton of upside. Uh, the, oh, they still have a Watcher. If a character could join Terminators, you can instead join these. And here's the big thing. All of the melee weapons are different and have there are more. Let's go through them. So first up is the, I'm gonna, just going to focus on the Sergeant's weapon. Because the Knight Master gets his choice of two weapons. He either gets a great weapon of the Unforgiven, five attacks, well, all this is weapon skill too. Five attacks at 622 with devastating wounds and sustained one. Pretty good. That is pretty good. Or, or he can have six attacks at 722 lethal. I would rather have the first one. I think sus one and dev wounds because of the dev wounds is better than plus one. But it is lethal hits plus one attack plus one strength or sus one dev. I think I think you take the sustained dev because the strength difference doesn't matter that often. It matters isn't. occasionally. Six to seven isn't a crazy break point. Sustained on five attacks versus just having six is like the, almost the same. Almost the same thing. If you have rerolls, the sustained is actually better. Yep. Um, but it's almost the same thing. And then would you rather have dev or lethal? And it's like, I'd rather have dev. No. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, then the other four members choose between a Mace of Absolution, the old option, and a power weapon. The Mace of Absolution, however, is different than it was. It is now a six, four attacks, weapon skill two, same as before, at six, one, 
two, not six one. It used to be three. strength six, AP one, damage three. It is now strength six, AP one, damage two. And that is not insignificant. Do you remember maybe a lifetime ago when we were talking about Inner Circle Companions and how their 612 four attack weapon was not very good? They hit on twos into characters. This is the same weapon without lethal hits. It's not Shoot. great. If you're going to be strength 6 AP 1, you damn better be damage 3 or damage high enough to be really different. It's got to be, you six won't one, force a lot of failed saves. So the failed saves you get have to actually hurt. Yeah, and this is not that. And these don't. Now, I will say, Deathwing Knights are still just as beefy as they always were. Mm -hmm. Just half as beefy, because it's half the size. You, model by model. model so by like, model, if you want to take like multiple five-mans, sure. you will hold space really well. Yeah, they're still thick. They're still thick. Mm -hmm. I think Deathwing Knights are workable in a gladius yeah because they, specifically they compensate for you not mm -hmm. hitting that hard Let's with the talk about the other weapon oh yes yeah with well, the other weapon also <laughs> no, I, 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 I agree but like let's get that out <laughs> sorry there. i forgot there was a second option yes. this one is the better weapon though in my opinion they can choose i ugh. they can choose to take a power weapon instead of the mace of absolution so it's the, the the fancy new sword that's in the kit that looks like it's bigger than a guardsman uh it is five attacks at six two one so it's either four attacks, six, one, two, or five attacks, six, two, one, weapon skill two either way. Which one is better is up to you. Yep. I think the two damage mace is still better. I think the two damage two damage mace is slightly better. It's just sad. But it is objectively, it is just worse in combat than it was before. Now, big context asterisk that I have to add. We have not received the updated points for the MFM at the time we're recording this. Yes. We only have the book. We don't have points. The points in the back of the book are dire. They also, however, are fake because we have not yet received a codex where the back of the book points were anything resembling accurate. So we're just, there's going to be a panic when this, on Saturday, someone shares a picture of the points in the back of the book. I just wouldn't overthink the points. Yeah. They, if, what if, did you say? They went up 11 points. They a went up 11 points a model in the back of the book, which again... I just don't think is real, and we're just gonna have to wait because they also have the old, old points for Terminators before they went down twice. Yeah. So like, we'll just see where it is. I personally think that if Deathwing Knights are the same cost as before, you probably won't see them. And if they are anything cheaper, you still might, and you still might see a five man on occasion. I, you're just not. I don't think you're gonna see many. I don't think they're like horrible. I think they just struggle with the like potentially being all right despite themselves yeah right? they're, like, they're tough but they can't kill a rhino no they can't so that's why i'm saying you need the gladius is because you need to be able to fall back and charge you need to be able to get extra point mm -hmm. of ap you need to be able to get lance i don't even and even that. with all of that it's like are you really running that in the Gladius? it's like i think in the gladius i think you, if you're running dark angel gladius specifically right like you're pre-committed to running dark angels and you're running the Gladius. I think you do run a unit or two of these guys. That being said, that's assuming that you are starting with a Dark Angel Gladius. I think I'd rather take Terminators. I know. If current points. Current points? Like if I think, I don't think that I would pay an extra 45 points. If Ignore my old points. I don't think I'd pay an extra 45 points for Death Ring Knights. I think they, they don't hit as hard as a normal Terminator squad or have a gun. Um, they have extra attacks. They they don't necessarily hit less hard. Regular Terminators yeah. do not hit hard. They don't. I agree. I don't think they do either. I don't think they do either, but at least they're like kind of thick. They're yeah. pretty yeah. tough. We'll see what the points say. And that will inform everything. Yeah. Let's points, go on to the points as always does everything. But I I honestly think their data sheet has some potential in there. Yeah, the minus one damage terminators are always gonna be tough. Yeah. Real simple there. Ravenwing Command Squad. Has been changed significantly. Every model is now four wounds. Still a 12-inch moving bike with a 5 up pinball, which is cool. They are leaders. Specifically, the champion has characters. The weapons are the same as before. And as far as I can tell, the rules are the same as before. So you can... So rules. You can return one destroyed model that's not character or invader to the unit. Which is cool, because you can now return a four-wound uh, Ravenwing Ancient. You can't return the champion, and you can't return the apothecary, because if he's dead, he's dead. And if the champion's a character. But you could theoretically return a four-wound... Ancient. That's not bad. Which is not bad. Um, the Ancient is plus one OC, which takes them to OC3 per model, which is quite high. 
your plus one to advance and charge rolls for the unit, which is cool if you can advance into anything, and you can heroic for zero CP. Their gun, Plasma Talents, is unchanged. When you overcharge it, it is two shots at eight minus three, two, 18 inch range, hazardous rapid fire one. I like, I like healing models back in that. Their combat, the Black Knight um, combo weapon, is still three attacks at five, two, one. Yeah, you get the the champion gets a pretty decent weapon, but yeah, the rest of the unit six attacks high. at five two two. It's cool. Um, you can theoretically take grenade launchers instead of um, uh, plasma talons, although I you can. I don't think it's a huge difference. You just you just won't. The, the crack grenade's like not bad, but it's fine. Yeah, yeah. But who cares? You, you you still won't. So I think that this is better <clears throat> than the the bike chaplain. What a high bar you've set there. Well, there are two leaders that can join mounted units, and I think the Raven Command Squad is better than the Bike Chaplain. I mean, I agree. Here we go. And then we have Black Knights, which have the exact same weapons that I just discussed. Plasma Talon's unchanged, Combat Weapon is unchanged. They still get Anti-Monster and Vehicle 4 plus on the charge, which is kind of cool for the, the Black Knight's champion. But everything really else is like still just damage one. All the time, so you can shoot these things to death? Nope. Um, they come with the plasma talons and the thing, and that's it. If they are the same points in the MFM as they are now, they are still expensive. They could have anti-monster vehicle like 2 plus almost. And on it, the charge, I, like, on the 2 plus I would care about, but... I mean, even 3 plus might not be able to do enough, because you just don't have good weapons in the unit. Yeah. So... Those are Black Knights. There is not much there that makes me want to take them, other than the fact that it is technically better than an Outrider. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm just... God, there's such just a mediocre... The data sheets are painful. Unit. The data sheets are painful. We are now on to the four Ravenwing units and, uh, like, the unique, like, vehicle stuff. So the Dark Shroud is literally unchanged. It is still a 10-wound land speeder that's OC3. That's a 6-inch aura of stealth and benefits of cover. It was pretty good before, but it is mainly as good as the units around it, which, you know what, this is still not a bad data sheet to just chuck into attachment. It's not bad. It's not crazy. It gives it to everything. Stealth cover to everything within six. Yeah. Perfectly fine. I'm perfectly fine. The Land Speeder Vengeance is, has received two changes. The base profile is the same, but its gun has received one change, which is that the Plasma Storm Battery is minus one damage to both the overcharged and non-overcharged version. It used to overcharge at D6 plus one shots at nine minus three damage three. And it is now nine minus three damage two when it overcharges. Damage three to two is a massive great point. Yes. And because the non-overcharged version is damage one, that means you are never not overcharging. Yeah. Like you're, sometimes you were shooting something damage two and the AP didn't matter too much. Like those two wounds and damage two is fine. I cannot imagine what I'm shooting this thing at that I wouldn't overcharge it. Yeah. I mean, like, if I'm killing guardsmen that aren't in cover, sure. Yeah, going from damage three to damage two is is pretty ruinous for this thing. Yes, I, I just don't I don't get it. It's gone. I'm this this, this data sheet no longer exists. As yeah, as I, if it goes down twenty or thirty points, I will reconsider. It has to go down so much. But like yes, so much damage three to two is so, like I would pay twenty points a model to give a land speeder plus one damage. It lost fifty percent of its damage. Yeah. It's huge, and against some targets, it lost a like so, it lost a, more than that. Yeah. Right, um, like any time you have to. Every, and, against any three wound. three wound model, you have to. It, it's half. A, well, it lost fifty percent of its damage. It's half as effective as it was before. It's its rule also changed. Storm of Vengeance is the rule where when a, a friendly unit uh, dis dies within six inches of it, the land speeder vengeance can shoot at the enemy that killed it. It used to be every land speeder vengeance can do this one per, once per turn. Now one vengeance once per turn can do this. Yeah. So Sorry. it used to be that you would run three of them in a little ball, and if someone shot and killed one, the other two would immediately shoot it back. Yeah. And yes, you can use careful positioning to get around it, so it wasn't crazy good, but it was, it was cute. It was nice, I liked it. I yeah. played a couple games and it was fun. It dictated what your opponent could do on their turn if yeah. they didn't want to cop some shooting. Yeah. And, like, it's fine. And that was fine. It's fine. Uh, but now only one vengeance per turn can shoot back. No, zero vengeances will shoot back because, because they will not be seen because they're no, they lost a third of their damage output for no real reason and uh, into a lot of targets. There's a lot of three wound models running around. They lost half of their damage That's output. Bad. It's that very is, that bad. That is dire. Um, There's no way these things cost 60 points. Like, Yeah, if they make it super cheap... I'll spam it, sure. But it, it's currently, it was like 1, 125, like 130. One, it was up there. It needs yeah, to it be was... like 100 points before I even look again. Yeah. But then that's not saying I'll take it. That's when I look. 
The Dark Tile is completely unchanged in weapon and profile. It is a toughness 811 when fire with a 5 up invuln that can hover, doesn't have stealth, and it's as a hurricane bolter, and its rift cannon is D3 plus 1 shots at 16 minus 4 flat 3 with dev wounds. It's still kind of cool, but it's also a T8 flyer that's expensive. It has received a small change to its stasis bomb. No, it's not better. Uh, where instead of once per game, a Dark Talon can uh, use a bomb, it's once per turn, a Dark Talon can use the bomb. They're under each once per game. So you can't do two bombs from two Dark Talons at the same time. If you take one Dark Talon, nothing has changed. If you take zero Dark Talons, nothing has changed. Um, the bomb itself, however, is actually pretty good. In my opinion, it's the best part of it. You bomb something once per game. The target suffers D3 mortal wounds and you roll a dice. On a one through three, the unit cannot advance or fall back next turn. Yep. On a four plus, it must remain stationary. Yep. Which I've... guarantees no fallback. Yes. I remember looking at this quite hard when I when I was yep. looking into Ravenwing back in the index. Yep. It is a good rule. The bomb is very good. More limits on the bomb are completely unnecessary. I don't think you're taking two of these because they're expensive. If you're taking two, you're realistically looking to try and lock yourself in combat for multiple turns. Yeah. Oh, frankly, you, yeah. Or I'm just trying to get my whole whole army in combat once. Yeah, but like one unit you know cannot fall back is, is usually very powerful. Enough. Yeah, agreed. So I don't think it's a significant change. But also, nothing in this book has made me want to take a Dark Talon more. It, the part that is quite cute is that you can fly over, bomb them. They can't fall back. You get into combat, and then... You they can can't, fall back and, and do everything. you can fall back and do everything, and mm -hmm. they can't. It, which is super cute. Is it worth taking a very expensive kind of bad vehicle that has to sit on the board for a turn in order to do this? Probably not. Probably not, because any opponent is either going to have a plan for you trying to do this, or they're just going to shoot the big thing they have no plan for to yeah. death. And it's not tough. Yeah. Everyone has a plan for that, and I'll tell you that much. Yeah. The only armies that cannot shoot Dark Talons in combat are armies that you don't want to get stuck in combat with. Yeah. Like world leaders. Yes. World leaders, you can use this rule on all day. They're not killing this thing on they're, the turn it drops. They're not falling back if you're stuck in combat. They're, they're happy where they're at. No, they won't need to fall back because you'll be dead. Finally, there's the Nephilim Jet Fighter. It is, as far as I can tell, completely unchanged. It is a fight uh, flyer that still has hover. It is minus one to hit in shooting, and it's minus one to wound against fly models in shooting, which is cute, but it shoots... Fine. It has two crack missile shots that are worse because they're the old crack missiles at 8-2-D-6. That is quite It bad. has uh, three heavy bolters stapled together into an Avenger Mega Bolter, and then it has a two-shot last cannon. Does it have all of those? Yeah, it's, it has It a, doesn't have to choose between uh, any of those? Let me those. see. It comes with Avenger Mega Bolter, Black Sword Missile, Twin Heavy Bolter, and you can replace the Twin Heavy Bolter with the Nephilim last cannon. So yeah, you have, you have two last cannon shots, two missile shots, and then you have a 10-shot heavy bolter. It's perfectly respectable. That's fine. It's a little expensive currently. If it ends, the data sheet, however, doesn't have any problems. It's a good shooting vehicle, and so if it were to end up at the right points cost, then I would take it. And if it's not the right points cost, I wouldn't. Yeah. It's very, there's no like synergy. It's just, yep, this sure is a shooting flyer, and if it's costed right, I'll take it. Don't get the next Nasser in us. Don't, uh... I'm, current <laughs> points, I'm not taking it. <laughs> That it's the same as the Stormhawk Interceptor. That is the book. That That's is everything book. in it. And I none of those data sheet changes were positive. No. And unfortunately, the detachments, none of them inspired me. Yeah, I'm left after looking through this book with a reason to want to take any of it. Y yeah. Because they're just I like Azrael a lot. Isn't one. Yeah, none of the detachments so far. I think I like the Deathwing detachment the best. Sure. It's first take. That's just I think I like yeah. that one the best. No, I mean I agree. Um, and that's the one that I'm most excited to put games down with. So I'm going to play several games with Dark Angels. I like Dark Angels in general, so I want to play them. Um, I'm going to play several games with that detachment to see. I, I really, as long as it's legal, and fully acknowledge that if you are the person who doesn't own these models, I would maybe wait a month before I run out and buy 30 Hellblasters with my dice. 
However, if you already own 30 Hellblasters or it does not bother you to acquire them. And or even just 10, like if you already own 10. Yeah, if you already own 10, I think I would 100%, as long as that works, I would 100% run Hellblasters in this detachment. Yeah. Make your own decisions. If, if you are willing to risk the fact that it might not work yep. in the future, it's, like... It's, it's a might. It's a definitely a might. Yeah. There's no promises. No tomorrow. promises <laughs> that in six months they'll be legal because... Yep. Um, Necrons yep. have the exact same thing. Yep. And we see at least one example of GW being willing to fix that. So yeah. we'll see. It could be though that because the rest of that detachment is very uninspiring, they may not feel the need to. I have no idea what GW thinks. Also, I'll point out that uh, plus one to wound against some targets sometimes is not nearly as good it's as not crazy. dev wounds. I would love that. I would prefer dev wounds against a target. Yes, yes, for sure. Um, but... Uh, I just, this I is, don't... This, this book is not, it's not as exciting as some of the other ones. And I, I feel bad because I, I like Dark Angels. I would really like, like to have liked this, but it feels like there's a lot less flavor than normal. It feels like there's a lot less flavor. It also, again, just feels like there is not a rule in the book that makes me want to play anything in this book. Yeah, there's nothing that's saying, oh, you're a Space Marine player? Come on over to the Dark Angel corner. There's nothing that's like the, the if, first company task force where it's just like garbage top to bottom. Yes, it's better than that. It's just, I, I don't see a reason to play this. I just don't. Like there's, other than you want to, and that is Perfect. good enough if that works for you. Yeah. But honestly, you're going to be better suited running the Gladius, the Vanguard, the Iron Storm, something like that. Mm -hmm. There's just, and then at that point, you're better off running Ultramarines or Black Templars or something else. I just don't see a reason they, to play Dark Angels. Didn't make the, they didn't make the Dark Angel data sheets very appealing. No. Because n strictly none of them got better. A lot of their good ones got bad. Yes. Not, not even got worse. I was going to say got worse. They're just bad now. Yeah. Deathwing Knights got worse without being bad. Asriel, who is one of the best parts, is unchanged. And that's important because Asriel is king. Um, Asriel is still phenomenal and he's the reason to take it. But he's unchanged. He's not better. He's just unchanged. Yes. Um, Talon Master, gone. Vengeance, Honestly, might as well put Move It to Legends. Unless the points of the Vengeance change drastically, it no longer exists in a competitive grind. Yeah, yeah it just, just it, doesn't. Yeah, it lost half to a third of its power for no reason. Yeah, like, and no then benefit. its world got worse. <laughs> and like, then it lost that. And like that wasn't a big deal. The like, lion that alone would have been fine. The lion was not seen at all mm -hmm. because he was a hyper expensive beat stick that occasionally just randomly died. Yeah. And then they, they made him significantly easier to kill without with lack of minus one to wound. Minus one to wound on toughness nine body was the reason why I even considered taking him the one time I did. Yeah. Now there's like there's nothing. None. So I, I fully, fully agree. I think it's very unfortunate. Um, we'll see what the points say. Because there are still several data sheets that are in the realm of, well... If points are fine, if, they're fine. If companions are 25 points a model. Yeah, if companions are a, cheaper than Blade Guard, I'm willing to look at things again. If yes. they have the same cost or more, I will not. Very simple. Asriel is great. You said that. I, I will continue <laughs> to emphasize that Asriel is a king. Asriel is, is good. I don't think, I he's, think he's like great. insane. I don't think he is so good that you switch your chapter to Dark Angels. Unless you didn't have a plan. But if like, you're playing Dark Angels, you're taking him. Yeah, he's but a that, lot of take. I think that's that's the way it works. If you're playing Dark Angels already, mm -hmm. you take Azrael. But you don't play Dark Angels to take to play Azrael. I I think if you don't have an assigned chapter, you just default to Dark Angels and grab Azrael real fast. Because I think if I you think if there's better not, characters to default to, right? Yeah. So I, I for just splashing into a unit in a generic Gladius. In, in a generic, if you're taking a generic Gladius and you're like, oh, well, that's weird. I haven't actually taken an Epic Hero yet. Let me go grab one. Then, all right, at that point, then, yes. then you just grab Azrael. Then you just grab Azrael. That, that's but honestly, this is gonna make you happier. I think Calgar is just better. He is, but Calgar is more expensive by a margin. Yeah, it's it, he's like eighty points more expensive. Sure, so, I like that Azrael's cheap. That's it. But yeah, it's the data sheets. Don't make you want to play Dark Angels specifically amongst all the detachments. And these detachments don't make you want to come to Dark Angels. Yeah, well, it's kind of a compounding thing, right? The data sheets are range from unimpressive to bad. Yes. That you're either left with like, a, oh, I guess I could kind of make this work somewhere, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or, wow, this is bad. And those are the two reactions you have to anything that is an Astro. Yep. 
Um, and then the detachments then, are specifically aimed at the Dark Angel data sheets. Bingo. So it has the compounding effect of the, the data sheets being mediocre means the detachments don't stand out, and the detachments not standing out means there's no reason to take the data sheets in the first place. And yep. it just kind of cycles to being like... It is a vicious cycle. I don't really... You know, there's, there's no real reason to interact with any yeah. of these rules. If they week one jump out and say, wait, we meant to make the giant power sword that's taller than a guardsman AP2... Literally AP2 would be nice. <laughs> I don't even know if that puts them over the top because they are 35 points a model in the codex, which is fake points, but it's the first ones we've seen for them. It's the only ones we've seen. Yeah. So as far as where we're at right now, wrapping this all up, um, it feels like it's lacking a little bit of flavor. The new data sheets underwhelmed me significantly. The Legends choice is hurt. Unfortunately, I, I think that there are several things that you can make work. But to a competitively oriented player, there's not a lot of above and beyond. There's not there's no sprinkles on the ice cream. Yeah, I hate having to put a lot of work in in game and in list design to carry a unit that isn't performing. Yeah. So I mean like like the companions with their sweep attacks. Oh, you, okay, you can you can give them plus one to hit, right? Because they have that and they hit on mm -hmm. twos, and then if you give them oath, which is a valuable resource. If you give them oath, then they reel all their hits, and you can then fish for sixes. Yeah, you it's obliterate you obliterate a unit of guards with the character. Yeah, attached. gargoyles have never been so dead. <laughs> yeah, but like, <laughs> what are we doing here? Just give oath to a good unit. They don't need you to jump their hoops. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of problems. So, uh, unfortunately, that is the book. Models, ten out of ten. Awesome. Beautiful. So cool. So, so good. Some of the best space brain models I've seen in a while. Listen, companions speak to me on a very deep level. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to need some of those in my life. But am I going to need some of them on the table? That's the thing. That's the kind of thing that I'm going to buy and leave in a closet for a year while I just check the MFM every six months. I'm going to be real. If you told me that they were AP3, that would be more believable to me than AP1 if you look at those models. I agree. You really, yeah, I agree that it's, but, but they're not. So that's it. <laughs> like, but they're not. What are we doing? Why are they AP one? Are they, did they just round off the edges on all their swords and they're just beating you to death with the flat? I think they're, they're using the, 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 oh, pommel, the, 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 the pommel strike. They're, the pommel strike. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. But if they were AP three, then like, all right, now, now there's something that they do that's unique that mm -hmm. might make me want to play them. Yeah. But they're just, yeah, I don't know. With that said, I'm still going to try to make this work. Because Dark Angels are cool, and I want to. Yes. So I will be playing several games in the next week with Dark Angels. I will be going through this, trying my absolute damnedest to find things to work with in here. It's not as obvious as what we saw with some recent books like Necrons, but that does not mean that there is nothing there. And sometimes our first takes are wrong. That's true. I am not inspired on my first and second read, but I haven't played games yet. And you know what? Maybe maybe those plus one wound health blasters are the sauce all along. Maybe. I mean, if they are the sauce, I have a feeling they're not going to be the sauce for too long. We'll find out together. Um, but make sure that you check out some of the yeah. other content we're putting up this week. Because we're going to have a lot more Dark Angel stuff on YouTube. I know that if you don't if you don't put it on the table, I will at some point mm -hmm. put like 15 uh, Deathwing Knights and a Gladius on the table. 100%. Just to find out. That's all you, Chief. But I will definitely put that on the table at some point. I'd love to see it. Yeah. So, yeah. So, there is a game in the war room right now that uh, you can go see. So, if you want to see the Dark Angels in action, see if I'm able to make something work with this. Then, make sure you check out thewarroom.vhx.tv. You can get a free trial to get access to the war room and see what we're all about. As well, I'll be going live on Wednesday on our YouTube channel with a game with this uh, codex. And there will probably be a third game in the next week in the war room as well. Yes. So, now is a great time to join the war room. If you are a Dark Angel fan, want to get into the Discord, see what ideas we're cooking with, see what everyone thinks, guaranteed there's something that... The funny thing is, is I read this book three times, and I didn't catch that Azrael made Hellblasters plus one to wound until 30 minutes into this video. I didn't realize, I didn't put this together until mid-video, so I haven't read the list for that yet. Yeah. And that unlocks just one extra dimension. There's probably something else we missed. But, yeah. uh... And... This is recorded before any games that we have, before yep. we have played any games with the book. So if you do check out those battle reports, they will be um, be fresh ideas. They will be fresh ideas, and they will be fresh feedback after having played actual games with the book, which is always a little bit a little, little bit more okay. educated. There we go. Well, that's going to wrap us up for now. Thank you so much for watching us, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button, share with your friends, subscribe, leave a comment, let us know what you think about the new book and the new models. 
in that Deathwing box. And we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.